folks, I'm Tom Vassell. As you can see it, what's happening? Saying healing, hello! This is the fourth in our series of a preview of Essen Games. We are going through only 100 games. Only? <laughs> what a slacker. Yeah, well, no, I mean, really, there's, there's that many more games. We want to say thank you to Eric Martin for his Geek List, where we get a lot of the information for this. You'll see me referring to it occasionally. And you can find out lots of information at BoardGameGeek.com. But it was really a lot of games, so we're just going to give you some of our impressions um, of some more of them today. Yeah, and the reason it, the reason it is these 100 is because we these 100, one of us, at least one of us, has some particular interest in. You know, we're very interested to go see it. We want to know more about it. Uh, and so this is how we compiled 100 out of the massive 600-plus list. <laughs> and I'm glad, because even 100 was a lot to go yes. through. The first one today is from, um, I can never pronounce it, Z, name of this company? Lota Palit. All right. That sounds pretty good. It does. Lota Palit. It's another game designed by Christian <clears throat> Amundsen Aspi, and this is a, it's called Perfect Alibi. It's mm -hmm. a deduction game where there's someone who's been found dead on the ship, all the passengers have an alibi, and your deduction game like Sleuth. I'm in. Right I'm in, there. yeah. I'm really I in. I really like that cover, too. The cover is a very, uh... Very eye-catching cover, very like the dun, cover, dun, dun. The cover did catch my eye. Yeah, it does. It's got a great look to it. It's a nice setting for a mystery. You know, it's this looks like a really fun game. I I am this is high on my list. Yes, they just I mean this was just announced I mean uh this week of us recording, which is last week. Um and I I would not have uh it wasn't on my list, and now it's probably my top ten. Yeah. That's how interested I am in it. Well, yeah. I love Sleuth. I mean, I really like the deduction game. I'm hoping this is a little bit easier to grasp than Sleuth, because Sleuth is one of those games where I play with some people and are like, oh, my brain just exploded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Really looking forward to this one. And the next one is, um, let's see. Oh, well, not that one. Um, Dixit Memories. Mm -hmm. 84 more cards for Dixit. That's all this I have to say. This brings the total up to about 8,000 cards, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> How many cards? Too many? 8,000. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there have been around six releases or so. It's like six or seven. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. And again, more Dixit. I know Sam does not like this game, but I'm perfectly happy with that. I, I won't necessarily rush out and get it, but... More Dixit cards doesn't hurt. It's not that I don't like the game. I don't... In... The game is fine. I just don't enjoy the game. Right, right. That's I don't fine. see the point of it. That's, That's you not yeah, buying the game. But you yeah. can buy this these cards now and use them in... Uh... Firewood? No, no, no. no. Mysterium? In Mysterium. Oh, you can. As dream cards. Yeah, you yeah, can. Oh, I guess you could, yeah. Well, there's nothing that would stop you. I mean, you, no, just, you no. say, hey, we're using Dixit cards today instead of the Mysterium cards. I guess cards. so, I guess so. But, mm. again, more Dixit cards. If you're a big fan of Dixit, like, it's not would, a bad thing. I like Dixit. They aren't creepy, like, they, they aren't creepy looking yeah. like, the, like the Mysterium ones are, so it would break yeah. the theme a little. I mean, you could do it's that. It's happy dreams, but there's a murderer. No, you there's could no. do it, but I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. Anyway, Dixit, memory, sounds cool. More and more Dixit sounds good I don't want to support to the people making Dixit. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. The next game from Lookout Games, Uwe Rosenberg always has a game at the conventions, although this is in his two-player line. For, uh, it's called Hen Hengist? I think Hen Hengist. Come on. Hengist. Hengist? Uh, I don't know. Hengist. Here's Chicken your soup. Hen Hen Hengist. It's a ghost hen. Anyhow, <laughs> really like the look of this game. It looks like a simple two-player, it says 15 to 20 minutes, where you're racing for treasure. Ooh. has a little three-dimensional boat. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm, this looks great to me. This looks like a return to form for Mr. Rosenberg. Next is Agricola 3. <laughs> <laughs> no, back off. There's no, there's no, actually, I didn't. As far as I know, he's not doesn't have a big box game at at the Spiel. Hmm. I didn't see one. I don't. I Maybe don't I missed think it. So. But anyway, no, this looks great. I I'm I'm on board because I like his small designs a lot. I think he's a brilliant small game designer. I mean, obviously he does big games very well too. But this looks great. 
Then we have an expansion for Cold Express, Horses and Stagecoach. Now I had a demo of this at Gen Con where they showed it to me and there's like a stagecoach that's running next to the train. Right. And so you can go you back can and drop, forth. You can jump, jump across. And jump you gotta get on horses and then you can like get in a horse and ride backwards on the train and jump from horse to the train. That's just cool. There's also like a few other things involved with it. It was inevitable whenever a game's nominated for the Spiel des Jahres, right, right. it's going to you, have some sort of expansion. Would you actually ride backwards? No, you would just go slower. So right, you slow down. Pulling forward. Right. Yeah. So it's, you're not right. You're not riding backwards. Well, he's moving backwards. Is what he meant. I saw this as well at Gen Con. The train is just going. A horse can actually walk backwards too. Yes, I know that, but that's not what would be happening. In relate. Oh my goodness. <laughs> In relationship to the train, you are moving backwards. Oh, he's trolling. I know. Um, now you have Cold Express, right? No. Oh, you have it. I have it. Yes. Uh, Cold okay. Express is not uh, high up because it's because of the finger thing. It's anti meat hook game. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the game. I I, I do too. I just wish it wasn't so. I'm not. I'm not that enthused about this expansion. I have. To oh, say. I think it's I a got cool. I see it at Gen Con. Yeah, yeah. So it looks I. cute. You know, it looks interesting. It looks cool. Yeah. But I liked. Again, I'm not a big fan necessarily of really like games when they start tacking on a bunch of stuff because they stop being really like games. Or so, rather... So you don't like Power Up expansion for King of Tokyo? That's not that light. There's, a, there's like a gajillion cards with text on them. That's a light game. Come on. That's a very light game. Well, you're, well, well, you're considering different things to no, be I, light. I don't think it changes the complexity of the game. No, or that's exactly my issue. That's exactly what I'm saying. It just gives you more stuff. What's wrong with that? That's I'm not explaining myself. What I mean is, if I have to teach that game now, the game's going to be as equally light. Yeah. But now I have to explain twice as much stuff. You don't explain the expansion when you teach new people. You play with expansion. Anyway, people, you my point is, All right. it looks neat. I'm not rushing out to go get it. All right. It looks neat. I'm not rushing out to go get it either. I would. It's because of my fingers. They're too big, and I just I, I don't enjoy playing the game because of that. I think it's a I think it's a fabulous expansion. The next game is Watson and Holmes. This is from Ludanova, and it's another game of deduction. What? This is based on the well Sherlock Holmes, and so you're going into these stories trying to find clues. I'm really interested in this. Uh, I have the um, that deductive game, the, the, the Sherlock Holmes mystery game I oh, brought yeah, out. Sure, sure, and that is a lot of text. I'm hoping that this one might be an easier version of that. Well, this one seems like you got a bunch of questions. It's It sounds like it's it's chapter-based almost, where there's like a chapter with some questions you need to puzzle out, and then whoever gets those questions answered will win that chapter, for lack of a better word. And so it sounds like it's split up a little bit more. It sounds really good. Each and, chapter is played in a game? I don't know. I think you do multiple things in one game, it sounds like. Game? Again, we're speculating here, but yeah. it sounds neat. And, man, it's the year. It seems like the year of the deduction and hidden role games. Yeah. Now, both they, both they, genres so I really deductive like. Deductive so. pirate game. Yeah, that's it. Hidden <laughs> roles. Speaking of hidden roles, now we're up to Mafia de Cuba. Now, they, I have a copy of this already, but... It, that's just what I think early release. Right. It's being released in full at Essen. This is a game I really enjoy. You have a cigar box that you're passing around, and inside it are poker chips and diamonds, and you're stealing different things from that box as it comes around to you. Very entertaining, fun game. Which I still um, need to play. Yeah, I'll bring it I haven't tomorrow. played it either. You haven't played it? No, I was sitting right next to you when they said, oh, we're not going to play this game now. Oh, that's right. That's right. We had to. We had to <laughs> Everyone else got to play it. Bye, you. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that is... Um, uh, Mafia, de Cuba. Mafia de Cuba. All right, so now we're down to Chemist. one that Sam did get to play. Raptor. Well, Raptor is after Kemet. All right, well, let's talk about Kemet first. This is probably my number one thing that I'm interested in. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I love oh Kemet. Oh, my word. Did yeah. they show it to you at Gen yeah. Con? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kemet. I have pictures of that. You, you've seen pictures no, of that. I did, of him too. sitting there eating going... 
That's right. Uh, I have a now, yeah. I have what? Top one hundred. Yeah. I think I used at least one my, picture in your top one hundred. Oh, I where, well, anyhow, where you are like go, you go, were go. eating. Carry on, carry on. And being told what it was, and then you kept making faces with like food about to hit your mouth, and I kept just getting snatched. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Okay, anyhow, yeah. this adds a whole new color to Kemet. Uh, black color um, with the net new technologies. It also adds these priest pieces, which can be like upgrade and go around and lead your troops. It just mm -hmm. sounds great. I mean, I'm really pumped about this. And it again, adds, it's modules. You can add whatever you want. Right. And there's a few new monsters in it. There's, <sighs> yeah, there's some... There's some definitely interesting parts in there. I'm now nowhere near as big a fan of Kemet as Tom is, and I thought it sounded cool, so... I can I can see why yeah, you, you would be yes there you are why you would be extremely excited. All right, well I know you guys aren't seeing this. Maybe Sam will put it in the in the video. You're gonna have to. Now. <laughs> I can just walk up and put it in front of you. No, no, no. All right, but you're a big fan of Kemet too, right? Yes, I am. All right, but you're even bigger fan of the next game we're talking about, and that's Raptor. Whoa! Now I think you guys talked about you talked about this in our video where we went over stuff at Gen Con that you got to play. Yeah, that's right. This is a Katala Faduti game about dinosaurs. Well, specifically raptors and scientists. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a two-player game where one player takes the role of the scientist and the other player takes the role of the, of the raptor mommy and uh, her babies. And she, she is trying to get her babies off the board and protect them from the scientists. And if she kills a few scientists in the, in the process, two thumbs up. The scientists, <laughs> however, are trying to put her babies to sleep so that they can um, science things to them uh, yeah they, you want to put them in they'll take them to the lab sounds and super sinister and, you know that type of stuff right 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 so um and then they're trying to stay away from the the mama raptor at the same time and it's it's a card hand management type of thing almost a, a, a lot like um mm, i don't know i mean to me it just felt like a um, uh, simultaneous action selection yeah, sort that's of what game it is, yeah. and you kind of have to get in the other person's head a little bit. Yes. It's very, I mean, it's a solid game that... Mission Red Planet is what I was thinking about. Okay, the numbers, okay. The numbers that are... It's that a game that, that, upon first look, is appears to be very abstract. I think it actually transcends that because of how interesting the gameplay and the theme are. Yeah. And I was talking to Bruno, Bruno Faduti about this. Mm -hmm. Completely, that was a pasted-on theme after the fact. Right, right. Well, they, we, they, we they knew put that, it. Actually. Yeah, they yeah. they put that in at the uh, after it was. They had already sent it to a publisher. The publisher said, "No, we don't want it as that." Right. So they they got it back, and they and a couple years later, he was like, "Now eh, let's try this." Right, right. And they did, and here it is. Yeah. All right. The next game is uh, from. Uh, a game called Mind Fitness Games, which Mind. actually would probably make me walk by in the booth, I think, because it just sounds like a, we're going to make you work. We're going to actually make your brain smart. Um, but this is called Hack Trick. That's two words. Um, and it's another game of deduction. I love deduction, and so I'm really glad to see more of these. This, you're trying to come up with a, uh, a three-digit password, and so you're adding numbers to a sequence, and you're trying to figure out, I guess, this deductive thing. It's supposed to be a simplistic one with depth to it. That's what it says. I hope so. That um, sounds cool. I mean, if it's anything like a... And it's really cheap. It's seven euros. So. Yeah, yeah. It must be a small pack, right? So Information on that is different from the information on, on the actual site. On the actual... Not the actual site, but it, it's... it's uh, no, the Geek page. The Geek page, yeah. And the Geek page, it says it's eight and up. This one says 10, so I don't know. Eight and up, the oh, It's a kid game, bro. As far no, as I'm no. in a trolling mood today. Oh, I'm not in a trolling mood. I'm just saying. It's just, uh, I'm. Uh, how many games have we talked about already on this list that have been deduction or all this other kind of stuff? They're beating a dead horse here, I think. No, but that's my These thing. These things all came out simultaneously. Uh, this, is a, this, is a tra th this is a trading in the Mediterranean thing that's happening right now. But I'm saying there's not enough deduction games, so I'm glad. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And I'm interested this in all is, these. If this is anything like a simpler code 777, which it sounds like it is, I'm on board. Actually, it sounds... Maybe what's that game last year that you got uh, where you, you turn... Cryptos? Cards, cryptos, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I love that game. I so, was a huge fan of that game, so yeah. Just I'm, not, I'm just not totally. feeling it. All right. Well, this game I'm really excited about. I saw this one last year at S&A. They were showing it off before the Kickstarter, and that's Tricarian Legends of Illusion. And it's a Euro-style game, but the theme is cool, where each person is a magician. 
okay. an illusionist and you're trying to get your stuff together and learn different tricks and things. I think that's a cool thing. That's better than, you know, build a castle to impress the did queen. Did you play it or did you just take a look no, at it? No, I just it? looked at it. But this was pre-Kickstarter mm -hmm. and it looked amazing even then. Mm. It looked really good. Um, it's, it looks like it's a, a fairly in-depth game. The board does look amazing. Um, and I, I'm a big fan just because of the theme mostly. The idea of being a magician is non-existent. I mean, I'm talking about an illusionist magician, not the this is, um, mages and stuff. It's but. one to two hours. And if it goes two hours, I don't know if I'll be on board for it. Because it's, yeah, it's a heavy coming around. No, 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 no. It, because it's a heavy. <laughs> I think it's gonna. It could turn into a heavy um, uh, Euro game. And if it's a two-hour, just, just plain flat Euro game. Um, but if it's a one-hour, just plain Euro game. Okay, I'll take that. I, it, it holds very little interest for me. I don't like that theme. No, it looks I, cool. I like the theme. Why is that theme not cool? You don't like watching magicians? I love it. Yeah, I just don't want to play one for two hours in a game. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Mm. All right, the next game Z has already played, and actually Sam has played it too, and that's and Time Bomb. You can go see a review of this, actually. Nobody cares about that. You don't like Time Bomb? Huh? It was... Bleh. It seemed very... Uh, you who, play? Yeah, play with you. <laughs> we, we actually <laughs> he sat there and you broke the game, and we were just like, yeah, okay, we knew each other were fine. And we, so I was, we were just passing cards back and forth, and we won the game. Yeah, but that's that's not breaking the game. That's part of the wow. game. I've played a lot. That. I actually that's, got a lot of plays. Of so it's a in. broken game. That's no, basically no, no, what no. you're saying. I played a ton. Before I reviewed this game, I actually played <laughs> quite a bit. I played like 10 games. I'm sorry. And uh, I really like it. I thought it was a really solid game that does a lot with very little. Go see my review if you want it to find out more. It looks horrible. Okay. That it does. That it does. Yeah, it doesn't look that good. But, I mean, the people <laughs> playing it seem to be having a blast when it's I watched him. Except Sam, apparently. He's trolling. No, All right. <laughs> I am not trolling. <laughs> Jaraku is the next game from Modius Game Design. Here we go. Oh, that's right. You don't. You don't. You actually don't like this one, mm -hmm. but you do like I it. I do like it. Yes. I. <laughs> it's a trick-taking game, kind of mixed with area control. Right. Two things that should never be mixed. Well, I, I like when they do that kind of thing. <laughs> I thought it worked well, man. I mean, it's it's like yeah. You were the I, think so. I think you were the only person at the table that thought that way. Yeah, that's okay. Whatever. Yeah. Just um, no. Here's the deal. I watched it for a while and I said that ah, doesn't look good at all, and I I exactly. made some negative comments. But as the game went by, Z was winning me around on it. I, I would like to to try it. I haven't actually played it, but right, it looks right. interesting, and I think that you got to look at the long view as you play the game. No, you do have to get a look at the long view, but if you get stuck. All the way on the other side of the board, you have very little chance of winning. Mm -hmm. And that's what I don't like about the game. Because that first initial placement is random. So if you randomly get put on the other side of the board, good luck. Because yeah, you're going to need it. I thought it was really smart <clears throat> way both high cards were good in the trick-taking, winning that part, and the low cards were also good because they allowed you to deploy closer to where you wanted to be eventually. Mm -hmm. It just had a great balance of... A trick-taking game and an area control game, and and both sides are very simple. Okay, the game's not heavy at no, all, really. It's not heavy, but it's a good-looking game, and it's a nice combination of two genres that I really like. So it worked for me. Yeah. I don't know. I'm all not, right. I'm not feeling it. Then a very very hyped game. Yeah. From Modifius Entertainment, Thunderbirds. Now, interestingly enough, this is coinciding with the 50th anniversary, and I see a, a, several people saying, ooh, Thunderbirds, but it's the 50th anniversary. I'm 39, you're what, 41 or whatever. Right, it's older than both of us. So we, no, most people who play board games, that I, that as far as I can tell, are in their 30s and 40s. Right, right. So most of those people don't have any kind of nostalgia for this because it, they, it was before a generation. Yeah. So... It's a weird theme for sure. The one thing that's got it on the list for me is very, very simple. There was a movie. I know what it is. Matt Leacock. Matt Leacock. There was a, a movie that came out, a Thunderbird movie that came out more recently than 50 years ago. That's true, but and it didn't I'm, do very I'm, well. Yeah, I understand that, but just for the look of the game, it would have been a better design choice to go with that movie 
than with the original. Well, they may not have the license to that. Uh, but I don't, I don't mind this. I don't mind the look, and I actually don't mind the theme. I just don't know. It seems like an odd theme like to take out from somewhere. But right. I'm a super excited about the game because oh, it's Matt Leacock Cooperative, and yeah. we are currently playing a Matt Leacock Cooperative game and having a blast. Yes, I understand that. I'm and excited just because, again, I don't have the tie into the theme, mm -hmm. but, I, but I'm digging the retro... Well, it's right the in retro his retro thing about you do it. like retro a it's, lot. You know what I mean? I'm not like I'm not connecting it to like nostalgia. I'm just going, "Ooh, that's cool and retro." That's yeah. it. Okay. Uh, all right. Next one is from Mr. B Games and that is Post Human. This was a wow. very successful um, Kickstarter and this one I'm very mixed feelings on. This one barely made the top 100 because we all I think have mixed feelings on it. Right. You love the theme. I do. I am a big post-apocalyptic theme guy, yes. I'm worried because Mr. B Games so far has not put out a bona fide hit, in my opinion. Um, I, did, I liked Spurs a lot, mm -hmm. um, but it, you know the component quality can better. I hope the component quality is better in this one. I'm also worried that it's two to three hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, well, but it's really getting a lot of pre-buzz. People who played it early have liked I'm it. I'm not necessarily worried about two to three hours. I'm I'm worried about scroll back up. You keep scrolling, man. You need to chill. Um, I'm worried about partnerships, role playing, and click show more there for a moment. Well, I don't know that the partnership thing. Well, people, I mean, variable player variable, powers. You like variable player I powers? I like that. But those two things right there, partnerships and role playing. If you look at the what what actually the board is like and all that kind of stuff. Looks like a very small game. Well, these things. How could are you going to sit around this thing for two and a half hours? Is it going to be a role playing game where you do no, some things on a board we've, sometimes? We've seen this game already. We've done, I believe, from uh, Origins. from Origins. We have. Okay, I didn't you know, know from Origins. the Origins summer preview. This has been covered. You can go look at that, and there's more information on the Kickstarter. All of that. I think the role playing part just comes from the fact that the game is very story driven. You're not role playing. You're moving through the landscape. You might read. You encountered this guy. Mm. That that's what they mean by role play. Okay. You know, and you evolve. If you eventually if something happens to you, you become a a mutated person. So it's gonna have a little bit of Arabian Nights in there. No, 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 not like that. It's none of this like reading a choose your own adventure stuff. As far as I can tell, there's none of that. You're it's saying it's an adventure a, game. It's an adventure game, right? But I, I've got a. I've by got that a, same token, I've got a solid five on it, man. I don't. I'm. I'm not hyped about this at all. I. I'm hoping they strike a nice balance between it being thematic, but solid mechanically. What I don't want is another big blast off all your weapons kind of game like all the other games in that genre have been. It seems. Yeah. You know. Again, I keep going back to After Earth. I don't know why, but it's the one that comes to mind because it was like After Earth. Mutants, guns, God. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't want it to be that. I want it to be a game with some good mechanisms also. Yeah. I like the next game because it has vassals in it. That's Excuse Cymerg me? from NSKN. Actually, the one the reason this is on my list is because I'm always interested in NSKN stuff. I don't always think it's great, but it's always intriguing to me. Yeah. And this is where you're a head of a clan and you have workers known as vassals, which I thought was, it's the other vassal, but still, hey, a vassal's a vassal. <laughs> um, but I don't know, it just seems interesting. I like the theme where you're this, you know, you're in a world of humans and dragons and then you're trying to build this powerful clan. It looks Euro-ish. Right. With a fantasy theme, right. mm -hmm. and I kind of tend to like those type of games because there's not very many that are yeah. straight fantasy, and this doesn't look like it's your typical fantasy. It's modular board, tile placement, worker placement. So I mean, all these of guys those, know how to put a game together. Let's all start of those, there, right? I mean, those three base mechanics are all inviting to me. So right. I'm I'm a little bit over just middle of the road. I'm around a six or a seven on this one. Well, yeah, someone has compared it to Stone Age. These guys definitely know how to put a package together. My main concern at this point is pretty much every game they've put out is is fairly solidly outside my comfort zone. Because hmm. they're all long, they're all heavy, they're all text heavy sometimes. It's there's They put out a game. It's a big game. And I think <laughs> this is going to be in that same realm of, yeah, back off. of a big game. That's great. <laughs> Again, just not in my wheelhouse. Gotcha. 
The next one I'm very excited about, I saw this at Gen Con, they showed me the uh, preview of it, and that's from Osprey Games, and it's called They Come Unseen. Yeah. This is a sub-hunting game. Submarine warfare. Right, one person's basically hiding from the other person, and it look, there's like hidden movement in it. It's a little long for you, I'm sure. Sounds cool, I like the title. So they Come Unseen? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good cool, title. Yeah. I thought you would be pumped about this no, one. I am, I am. I, I, uh, I saw it, checked it, checked it out, and uh, it's it's right in that uh, historical war reenactment type vein that, that I like, that yeah. I do enjoy. Um, Eighty to one hundred eighty minutes. That might go a little long, but we'll see. Um, I'm usually with my war games. I usually like them to be a little bit shorter, but uh, this looks cool. Yeah, I think so. Um, then we have, let's see, the next one on here is, you guys actually played this game, I believe, or at least yep, saw it. We, Pearl. Did. we got at least a, a demo of it the, from Pearl Games, the Bloody Inn. I think we played through <laughs> yeah. one round of it or something like that. I think we like did, that. right, right. And it's a this very, is a game where you have people come to your inn or you kill them. <laughs> right, you have people, you run an inn and they come and it encourages you either, you, you know, get rent from them or just kill them and take what's in their pockets. And, and which uh, is usually more thing, than the guys. rent that they're playing. What's that? It's usually more than the rent that they would pay right, you. So, so it's, it's, it's worthwhile. It's more advantageous. But then to, uh, <laughs> investigators come around sometimes. It's a, it's a game with a very uh, stylized look. I thought the look was very eye-catching. I loved it. <laughs> it looks a little dark. I mean, it's a super dark it's game. No, it a is dark, dark theme, yeah. but it's... It's fairly tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, it's very tongue-in-cheek. And mean. the game is... Well, I would hope so. You know, it's... it's. I don't know how to put it, but it's got that, like... Um, it's like a very, I don't know what it is. It's a very European animated film vibe to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can almost hear the music while I'm playing this game. Right. It's like, da, 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 bruh, and kill the guy and bury him, and then you're back at the end. Hello, sir. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I don't know. It's like a, it, it sort of buzzes along. It impressed me. I'm really looking forward to it. This, I think, is in my top 10 games. I'm looking forward to it at Essen. Mm. All right, the next one is one I think you were interested in. Yes. Apollo 13, although it's Apollo XIII, X, Apollo 13. Roman numerals. Uh, um, I don't know if this is like based on, I don't think it's based on a real. Yeah, it is. It says, tells the story of the whole mission through a card-driven game system. I guess. I just wonder why they, they spell it with, okay, well, whatever. I don't care. It's Apollo 13. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, but it's like a story-driven game. It's card-driven, mm -hmm. which is... We're using cards to go yeah, through. Storytelling is one of the mechanisms. Yeah. You like that? No, I don't. But um, the historical aspect of it is pulling right, me that's in. That's what it is. If it's, if it's heavy on the storytelling, I'll pass. Right, right. Well, we can hope. We can hope. I hope it's good because I love the that, that That's a great yeah. story. Yeah. Tail Feathers. This is a big, big hyped release, right? Plat Hat's been pushing this. This is their version of the Wings and War type thing, although they're very clear to say that it's not Wings of War. It's, you know, you got mice riding birds flying around, and the riders matter in this one, and you can, like, even take characters from Mice and Mystics and mm. put them in the game. Mm. Cool. And it's all about how the, the birds are tilted. There's, like, a tilt thing, so when they're tilted, they'll... I don't know. Hmm. I haven't read a, a whole lot about the game, but the miniatures look amazing. Yes, they and do. And the artwork is great because it's using that same Mice and Mystics artwork, although... They want to make clear it's a very different game right. than Mice and Mystics. Mm. I'll certainly give it a whirl. I hope it's good. Yep. I really do. Um, I hope it's simple because I want this style of game where you're flying airplanes, or in this case, birds. I want it to be something I can play with my kids. Right. And I found that the more complex these games get, the less fun they usually are because you're like, okay, we got to check 65 things. Right. Well, let's say a 9 plus, so. It does. And can't it's be that, can't be that difficult. 60 to 90 minutes, which isn't very long. Right. Okay, and the last one we're talking about today is Revolt ah, Triple A. Revolt! <laughs> this is a Reiner Knizia game from Play This One. I like the games Play This One puts out. They usually have big, chunky, cool pieces. The last they year they had that they robot do. one, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. Um, it's just a card game, though, isn't it? This is a card game, yeah. Which they No, but I like their artwork. And I, mean, I like their... I feel their like they're going to put out a good production. Yeah, I like their style, absolutely. And this... Um, it sounds like a really light card game. This is this is just slightly above lukewarm for me, and it's. I mean, it basically, the game sounds like you you have rubber duckies fighting robots. I love that theme. Rubber duckies. And it sounds like basically everybody around the table plays a card face down from the hand. You flip them face up. The group that has the highest strength, duckies versus robots, wins, 
And then the, the Kanitsha twist is that whoever played the lowest card in the winning team is the player who won. So That's it's a one-trick pony card game. I don't dislike those. It sells for 10 to 20 minutes. So Sam is already like basically falling asleep right now. But I enjoy um, small card games. All right. Well... That's 20 more games, folks. We have 20 more to go, but make sure you watch that last video because these last 20 has at least four of my most look forward to games in it. Ooh. Really, really cool games coming. Uh, one of them which we've uh, been playing all the time lately. Um, <laughs> anyway, we'll see you then. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. Z Garcia, thank you, folks. Sam Healy, see you on the flip side, y'all. <laughs>